Hello, my name is David. Um, I'm the Tell Advisor for the Faculty of Health and Wellbeing, and in this video, I'm going to be going through um, the new version of PebblePad, PebblePad version five, um, and specifically, I'm going to be looking at uh, web folios. Um, what's changed? Uh, how they look different from version three? And some factors and considerations you might want to take into account. Um, now, currently, um, <clears throat> uh, I've already done a screencast, uh, and please look for that on um, an introduction to the new uh, version 5 home screen and how to navigate and where you're going, so I won't go back into that. Uh, and also, again, this video isn't designed uh, necessarily for people that haven't used PebblePad before. It's going to focus really on the changes between uh, version 3, the old version, um, and uh, version 5, which comes into effect on the uh, 5th of September. So if you're watching this after 5th of September, um, you'll already have version 5, and this is what it will look like. Uh, so if you um, access PebblePad using the same way you always do and have done in the past, so whether that be through a link in the Blackboard site or directly through the um, uh, through the PebblePad um, homepage on the internet, then this is the page that you will land on. Uh, again, so I'm just in my normal uh, PebblePad home. Now, if you remember from the previous screencast, um, at the top left-hand corner there is the burger menu, um, and that's where you can uh, access everything. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to click on the Asset Store. As you can see now it's uh, searching for my assets, and here we are, this is where all my assets. So again, um, if, you're, if you've just come to the new version of uh, PebblePad and you're wanting to work on a web folio, um, that you've had before, it will show up um, in here. Um, and let me take you on a uh, a quick tour of um, what a portfolio might look like. So I'm going to click here on my support for Pebble Pad version five folio. Okay, uh, and as you can see now, uh, there is a banner at the top as as before um just scroll down because i think my picture might be uh, hiding it uh, you can see if i click on that banner it allows me to have options to replace the image or remove the image so if i click on replace image it then pops up with a box on the right hand side and i can search for an image i can uh, upload an image if I'm putting on a new image or I can select from any of the default images down at the bottom here I can upload new and as you can see it's showing me the other photos in my asset star that I could upload if I wanted to um, now something that's uh, quite easy if I click off back on the main page as you'll see that box disappears um, unlike the old version of Pebble Pad, it, it doesn't create windows upon windows upon windows. If I want to get that back up in the top right hand corner, there's this little box called properties. If I click on that, it will bring up the properties um, for this, uh, this page. Now, you'll look at the top there, it has the term block and then it has the term page. So if you click on page, um, it will give you all the um, extra sort of editing options um, for, for the whole page okay and if you click on block uh, what it means by block is each time you add some content um, so in this case the banner it sees it as a block so that's a block and then if I scroll down a bit this uh, text down here if I click on that um, that is a block so that's what it refers to by block and I can see on the right hand side now my block option. So for my banner, I can change the background colour, um, it'll let me change the layout, um, let me add subtitles and various other options like that. Um, and I can close that. 
uh, different options will appear for text. So if I click in the text block and then do properties, it gives me text, text block properties. And again, um, I can change the background color, I can add titles, um, duplicate the block and, and various other various other options. So I'll just close that for now. Um, something that's interesting is if I click in the text down here, say September, I can just delete that and I can write in. Uh, no longer do you view your text um, in one place and edit it uh, in a separate box over here. Uh, now you just click in where you want the text to be and you can just start typing. Um, it is the same in that when you write text and you want to um, change the formatting of that text you do need to uh, drag and uh, highlight what it is you're wanting to edit and then again it comes up with your options so you can then change the font, you can change the size, the colour, you can make it bold or italic, you can add a link which again this will then link to, uh, you can make it so it links to an asset which might be a Word document or a PDF or you might link to um, a picture or something else that you might want people to access and, and, and download separately. Uh, you can link to a URL, um, so again at any web address uh, in the world and also you can um, link to email so you can set it up to automatically produce an email for somebody and then um, you've also got the ability to bullet list and again you've only got a couple of options, it is only basic editing. When you're done with that, you can just um, click off the box and uh, you'll come back to this. You can um, change, let me just scroll down a little bit, you can change the order that your work goes in with these little arrows on the left hand side. You can move it down and up. Um, and you also, if you click and hold, um, if you notice that shrunk, you can then drag it. You can drag it around to where you might want it to go. So I can drag it to the left of that text, or I can drag it over here to the right. If you can see the, uh, the blue highlight. So if I drag it to the left, um, you can then see how it's put it next to it. If I drag and hold again, I can then change it so it's above again. Um, in the bottom right hand corner of my block I can adjust the size, um, I can delete um, this block of text if I want to, if I don't like it, and again I can click on this properties box in the top right hand corner um, and adjust some other bits and pieces. Now one of the things that's interesting with text columns is that you can split it so it uh, makes it two columns, so if I click on that as you can see it will automatically format and make that break that text down into two separate columns which if you've got a large amount of text in, in one block um, that can be quite nice just to uh, help reduce the, the size and amount of text. Okay, um, now up at the top I must uh, close my properties. Up at the top um, you've got the ability to save which um, again, something that's very important to remember, and this has been the case with the uh, old version of Pad and the new version of Pad, which is it doesn't auto save. It only saves when you hit the save button. Okay. Um, so you want to make sure that you regularly save. It does come up with a message, and you might have seen it pop up for me already, um, reminding you to save. Uh, and again, just in case your computer crashes or you have uh, any problems um, you do want to make sure that you hit that save button quite regularly um, and then when you want to you've also got the preview button um, again by hitting the preview button um, it's automatically saved it for me and it shows me what it looks like um, as a finished article now one of the first things that you might notice is the fact that there's no menu down the left hand side. Um, they've moved the menu now, it runs along the top. So as you can see along the top, um, I've then got my menu for my different pages within this web folio. Um, let's go back to the introduction. 
Uh, here on the right, um, it gives me the options uh, for asset information. It also allows me to see comments and it also allows me to see the feedback on it. Um, when I'm, and this is again how it will look if you publish it to the web or if you've submitted it um, or shared it, should I say, for assessment. Um, if I click on edit this asset, it will take me back to the edit mode where again as you can see it's showing me it in blocks. I can click in blocks and start adding text in there and other bits and pieces. Um, as you can see up at the top I've got my pages and to add a new page there's this little uh, plus button um, and then you can say add a new page here or you can add an existing asset so again if you've created a page separately um, you can add it in there um, and you can add an existing portfolio so that allows you to then um, uh, put a whole portfolio inside um, each other and that battle shows it as a nested option. Now say my introduction page that I've already created um, I can um, click on the plus button and that will convert uh, that page to a portfolio uh, and what that allows to do is then to be able to add sort of sub menus down. Um, I've then got my uh, setting the cog on the left hand side here and if I click on that it allows me to edit the um, the page name um, and then I can confirm that or again it allows me to be able to remove the page if I've decided I don't want this page on here. Now if I wanted to add content now um, <clears throat> there's just this really large button right in the middle at the top with add content. I can then choose whether I want to add a banner, whether I want to add text, an image, video, audio, YouTube or quote. Um, now as this is focusing on the changes, um, they all operate very much in the way that they have done in the past and the way that you'd think. Um, the largest uh, change, um, which is fantastic, is this new button, the YouTube button. So, um, as a student or as an academic, um, you have a Google account at the university, which allows you to have also a uh, YouTube channel. Now, um, it's not always possible to keep your YouTube channel uh, with all the privacy settings on, um, but you can make it so you can create videos that... Um, can't be found on YouTube, can't be found through a Google search or anything like that. You've got to have the link to be able to see them. And if you record video and start it in that YouTube account, um, you're very able to very quickly um, um, embed uh, that video in um, in your portfolios. Um, and, and to be honest, it's a uh, it's a great tool. I'll show you how you can do it quickly. So, um, uh, if I just uh, open a new tab, um, so I want to go. I want to go to YouTube. So, just go to YouTube's home page, we'll see what videos happen to be there. Um, right, let me see if there's any sensible YouTube videos um, to use as an example. Um, let's go to YouTube home. Anything sensible coming up? Just a quick search. Um, I'm going to search for the Bake Off. Uh, right, there we go. Uh, Great British Bake Off trailer. There we go. Let's pause that. Um, 
Now, when I go on that, um, you can't quite see it on on the screen, uh, but in the top search bar, I can copy the URL. Like I say, you don't need to go into the special share options or anything like that. And if I nip back to my Pebble Pad portfolio, if I click on YouTube, because I want to add a YouTube video, it comes up with this box here. And all I do is paste that URL into that box and click OK. And there you go. And that's all it is. So if that's uh, either a video that's demonstrating something that you've done or uh, something that you're referring to, uh, it could be uh, an existing YouTube video that's on there or it could be a video that you've uploaded. Um, you can embed it in easily there. You can also click and drag this little corner down here and that'll change the size of it. You can replace the video and you can play it. As you can see, it plays even in the edit mode, it's straight in the box. And again, you can watch, you can go to YouTube to watch it, or you can make that video full screen um, as, as you want to. Um, and so I think that's a really powerful tool because it's, it's not that easy to get video content um, into your work uh, always. Um, and this is a really quick and easy way of doing it. Um, I can state though that if you are a student and you are looking at putting um, sorry about that, uh, putting video in, um, make sure that, you know, again, if, if, if it's just a video of you talking, your reflection, something like that, then um, you might be happy for that to be on uh, on YouTube and, and take, take that risk. It should be that no one can see it anyway. Uh, you can put it there and, and you'll be able to play and watch it. Uh, but um, make sure that again, if, if you're videoing anything that um, where you might be using anything to do with names of your placement or um, anyone that you might be working with, um, I, I would not recommend any of those videos going up on YouTube uh, and doing it that way. Not not with the uh, not if it's going to be shared with the general public. You want to make sure that it's. Uh, those videos are held privately on, on other university uh, networks in your um, Google Drive account, somewhere like that, that you, you can keep it secure. Okay, so at this block now I'm just going to delete. So again, uh, anything that you want to delete, so this YouTube video I don't touch you want in here, um, I can just click in the cross in the top corner and it'll remove that block. Um, Again, when I'm happy with what I've done and uh, how I've altered things, um, I'm able to click on the preview and, and that will mean I can check what my work's like. Again, I can make sure that I regularly save by right clicking the top left hand corner. And then when I'm ready, I can um, add more content, you know, a text box or an image or more, more traditional tools. Um, again, you might notice there's not lots of windows that have popped up. Um, you pretty much stay on the same page all the time. Uh, you just click in where you want to edit uh, and that all works uh, really well. Um, now there's a button down in the bottom right hand corner. Um, because of my video I don't think you can see it um, but it's a little help button and if you click on that and uh, you can do this on any page uh, this is a really great function I recommend it for everybody certainly when you're new uh, to Pebble Pad. Um, it pops up in the bottom so it doesn't again open a new window or take you to a help website or anything like that. It comes up with a little video uh, where it, what it thinks is the most likeliest thing you, you're going to be wanting to do. Um, and there's a little bit of text and a little video showing you um, how to use it. Um, again on the left and the right um, there's a little arrow. So if you've seen this and you've thought, ooh, that's close, but it's, it's not what I want, it's not the bit of help that I needed, um, you can press on these arrows um, and you can get um, all the other little help options. So again, you know, one for reordering pages, um, how to add pages to portfolio, um, again, moving and rearranging the blocks, 
go into the little video and the text. It's a really, really good help tool. Um, like I say, it's always there in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Like I say, unfortunately, it's where my uh, where my video feed is. Um, and then when you're done, you can click it and it just removes that um, that feature. But I think that's, that's it's a really good help tool, and that works anywhere um, where you are inside Pebble Pad. Um, uh, and I believe uh, that's everything for me. So that, that's a quick tour, really, of um, web folios. Uh, I can say now that for anybody who's who creates workbooks, so you're not kind of filling out workbooks, but you're creating workbooks. Um, again, the the look and and the way that the functionality works is is very similar. The help tool is the same. Uh, obviously, it just alters the options that you've got when you go to the add content um, they're still all the same uh, features as before as far as putting in tables and uh, being able to put in uh, tick boxes and uh, and like cart scales and um, evidence boxes it's, it's all there um, and it goes through in a very similar manner um, and I hope that's uh, that's covered everything um, thank you for watching this video uh, I hope you found it useful and um, good luck using Pebble Pad version 5. Thank you.